my friends, Stephanie here, and I'm back with more movie chatter, and I'm back in the movie room. I know a lot of you prefer the movie room setting to the desk setting, as do I, and the movie room um, uh, videos are not going anywhere. I was just checking out my new um, computer, camera, and microphone setup at my desk so that I would know everything was calibrated correctly for future live streams and things like that that I want to do from my desk. But that is a work in progress and I'm just going to keep chipping away at it until everything looks the way I want it to. But thank you to anyone who took the time to watch the video yesterday, leave me some comments, suggestions, all that stuff. I really do appreciate it. But this is home base. This is where you can expect to see uh, future videos. And what I have for you today is a little spin on the video I had planned for last night. And I think this is going to be a new segment. If you guys like it, it will be a new regular segment on the channel. It's called First Time Fails. These are movies that I watched the first time, didn't like them, gave it some time, went back, watched it again, and now they're up there with some of my favorite films. And these are not obscure films. These are mainstream titles that even if you haven't seen them, they'll be familiar to you. So I'm going to keep my commentary brief. And spoiler free but I'll let you know about my experiences with not really connecting with a film the first time and then giving it some time taking a chance on it a second time and boom home run so I always say give a film at least two times before you give up on it maybe three some of them take three but this first one might surprise you it stars Brad Pitt and it is fury and this is a World War II movie it takes place it's a group of guys that are in a tank um, that a tank crew and they're fighting with Nazi Germany and they end up getting stuck and they're all in this tank and it's a fight for survival. That's the long and the short of it. I saw this in the theaters with my parents and Kelly. Everybody loved it. Me, I'm like, what happened? I don't know what happened. I couldn't hear anything anyone was saying. All I heard was a bunch of explosions and shooting and yelling and I couldn't follow the story. I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, people were on their phones. The whole deal, the whole movie experience that is part of the big reason that I don't go to theaters for most movies. It has to be a really great movie to pull me to the theaters these days. So what happens? This comes out a few months later on a 4K and I pick it up because I'm like, all right, I have to give it another chance. I had company one night. What do they want to watch? Fury. So I put it in and we all know if you've been around the channel, you know, I can't hear, I can't hear out of my right ear. So I always watch films with the subtitles on. I also calibrate my sound properly. So it's not heavy on one end and then you can't hear the dialogue, things like that. Watch this movie at home, fell in love with it. I got it. I saw the story. I heard the dialogue. I was able to see what they were saying to each other. If I couldn't hear it, I could see it. And there were no distractions. It wasn't a theater experience. We were at home. I love this movie. I think it's fantastic. It's so well written. It's so well executed. The visuals, the cinematography is amazing. The action's amazing. It's so good. It's such a great World War II movie. And it's now up right up there with some of my top favorite war movies of all time, like uh, Hacksaw Ridge, Saving Private Ryan, uh, Hurt Locker, anything, Black Hawk Down, any of those movies that I love. Fury is right up there with them, and um, I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, see it. If you've seen it, watch it again, because it's a great one, and I love Fury. And uh, yeah, I was so bummed out the first time. I was like, everybody loves this movie but me, and then it was just a matter of a few things, and now I love it. And this next one, I think I was just resistant, because this is a true crime. It's based on true crime, and it's kind of one of those unsolved crimes and if you know you know so I'm not going to spoil it for anyone but this one is from David Fincher it stars uh, Jake Gyllenhaal Robert Downey Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Mark Ruffalo and it is called Zodiac and I love this edition because it looks like the letters that the Zodiac Killer was sending and if you know about the Zodiac Killer you know that these this was a string of crimes that was taking place and these this movie is based on some guys that worked at the San Francisco Chronicle that were trying to find this killer. And my whole thinking of going into this, I went into it with a really bad attitude. And I was like, why do I want to watch a film that's not going to have an ending? And that's what I went into it with. And I kind of didn't pay attention. I just drifted, drifted off, was doing other things, probably playing with my phone, if I know me. Even at the time, we didn't have like the, the nice iPhones and... I was probably playing with my phone, texting my friends, but I didn't care for this at all. I said it was boring. I said it was too long. There was no substance to it. So give me a few months, give me a year. I sit down and I decide to watch this again and I am sucked in from frame, frame one. I had a better mindset. I was more clear. I was more 
willing to connect to it and see what they were going to do with something that technically is an unsolved crime and how they I said there must be something to it if everybody loves this movie and really they did such a great job for the content that they're dealing with they did such a great job or David Fincher did such a great job of letting you walk away and feel like you had some sense of closure and that's what I was afraid was going to be missing and it's not. This is a really well done movie. And if you haven't seen Zodiac and you like true crime, definitely check this one out. It's really, really good. And it really, they don't fall short in any category. And I think they just did a great job. So shame on me for being so closed minded the first time. But I'm a big fan of Zodiac. Now, now this next one, this one falls on me too. Dunkirk. I saw this one in the theater. I saw it with my parents because my dad is a big fan of war films and so am I and we decided all to go to the movies and see Dunkirk. All I had heard was amazing things about it and what happens with Dunkirk is if you've seen it you know you kind of just go to this place there's not a lot of explanation you're kind of dropped into the location at Dunkirk and within the first half hour the action kicks in and there's not a lot of backstory to it and admittedly I was not up on my European history as much as I should be because living in the United States, when we hear, uh, when we, we went back when I was in school, when we were taught history, we were taught pretty much American history. I don't know how they do it now, but it kind of fell short when it came to the European side of things and what went on and how they would end up in such a situation like Dunkirk. But I thought that the action looked good. I thought the um, the cinematography was amazing. I mean, I, I thought it was a great action movie, a great looking movie, but I didn't understand what was going on. That was my fault. I didn't get the significance of the battle at Dunkirk. So I walked away without thinking much of the movie, kind of thinking maybe I would never see it again. Well, then a little movie called The Darkest Hour came out. And I watched The Darkest Hour, and I have said this before on the channel. If you haven't heard me, this is going to be the first. If you've heard me before, I'm sorry for the redundancy. But I think I think this is Darkest Hour is the ticket for people who don't have a, a, a good grasp of European history when it comes to wars and things like that. Because The Darkest Hour really took us to a place. It's, it's uh, about Winston Churchill. Uh, Gary Oldman plays Winston Churchill. And it's during the same time, and it leads up to the Battle of Dunkirk, the Battle at Dunkirk, and it explains why it was so critical that the events of Dunkirk went off and went well. So it really was a lead-in to Dunkirk, and had I seen The Darkest Hour first, I would have loved Dunkirk, because as soon as I saw The Darkest Hour, I went and I rewatched Dunkirk, and it was a completely different film, a completely different experience, and I understood what was going on and I saw it for the masterpiece that it is. It's an absolute masterpiece. So I tell everyone, if you if you want to watch Dunkirk, if you don't know a lot about European history, watch Darkest Hour first and then watch Dunkirk. And I think they almost should have been uh, released as a double header. It would have been a great double bill because they really do. Darkest Hour really is a lead in for Dunkirk. So that's that's what changed my mind on Dunkirk and I now think that it is a gem of a film and I'm a huge Tom Hardy fan so it was hard for me to walk away from one of his films going like eh. I love it now and uh, Darkest Hour like I said I think Darkest Hour was very good too but Dunkirk is a masterpiece. I think it's great. Now this one I'm sure a lot of people probably feel or felt the same way and this one this one stars Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, and a bunch of others and it was uh, very popular last year poor things and if you've been around the channel you know that this was one of my favorites of the year however with a caveat before it was my favorite of the year it was probably headed to the trash can because I tried to watch this I want to say two times before the third one kind of hooked me and I was able to finish it I started watching it. I had no idea what it was about. I went in totally blind. I heard some scuttlebutt online about, you know, some people loved it, some people didn't. But I went in totally blind, knowing it was going to be a little bit weird, but I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea how bizarre this was going to be. I was like, it was almost unwatchable to me. I turned it off the first time. The second time I watched it, I got a little further in. I turned it off again. I'm like, I can't watch this. I, the things that were going on, I was just, I found it unwatchable. 
So Kelly kept watching it and she said, she's like, it keeps getting better and better and better. And I think that you'll really like it if you just hang with it. I was like, no way. I sat down the third time. I had the subtitles on. I watched it. I watched it with an open mind. She had given me a little explanation as to what's going on. I loved it. By the third act, I was so invested. I was so into this movie. You have no idea. And it turned out to be one of my favorites of the year. And really, I tried. I had to work to connect with this one. Because if you don't know, brief synopsis, basically what happens is Emma Stone's character has passed away. Willem Dafoe is kind of like a Dr. Frankenstein who brings her back to life. But as she's starting out in the beginning of the movie, her brain hasn't fully developed yet, so she acts like a child. And I couldn't get why that was happening. And as she grows and as she spends more time in this body, her brain develops and she becomes more and more mature. And that's what I was missing. I was not letting that happen. I didn't let the movie unfold at its own pace. And with this type of movie, is it weird? Yes. Is it bizarre? Definitely. Is it unconventional? Totally. Is it good? Yes. It's awesome for people who can go along with what they see on this movie. It's a, uh, it's very unconventional. But if you can just go at it, let the movie go at its own pace and you're okay with the content because it is very sexual and very crazy, very bizarre in places. But if you can just go along with it, I think this is a really amazing film. It was one of my favorites of last year and uh, I stand by it. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I gave it three tries and I'm glad Kelly pushed me to finish it because this is a winner. So Poor Things is my next one. Okay, and my next one just redeemed itself last night and it's Nicolas Cage in Long Legs. Now, I have heard hype about this for months leading up to the physical release of it. Uh, I didn't see it in theaters, but I, I wanted to wait for the physical release to come. But it was available on streaming. And when it came available on streaming, I want to say maybe like a month, month and a half ago, I did rent it. But admittedly, I haven't been the best movie watcher lately. I've been very stressed, very tired. So when I sit down and watch a movie, I'm so relaxed. I'm falling asleep. I'm falling asleep. I'm waking up. And, and that's what's going on through some of the movies. Not all, but some. This happened to be one of those. And this is not a movie that you can take your eyes off for one minute because you have to follow the plot line from beginning to end. Now, the first time I saw it, I was just confused. I had no idea what happened. I wasn't really blown away by it. I thought it was okay. I was like, you know what? I'll give it another chance later. But I wasn't really that impressed. I thought Nicolas Cage was good at what I saw. I thought his, his uh, performance was really amazing and really unnerving. He was very, very frightening to me. But... Uh, now, this was billed as a horror uh, a horror movie, but I think now, after seeing it again, Awake, I think it's more of a psychological thriller, like think Silence of the Lambs, with horror elements thrown into it. I think there's definitely horror elements, but uh, what we have now, I watched this again last night, and I absolutely loved it. I think this is amazing, and it's probably going to end up being one of my favorites of the year, but what it is, is we have this... A serial killer, long legs, who has been supposedly responsible for these murders of various families, and no one's been able to really get a handle on who the person is. So we follow the um, FBI agent who's in charge, or who's put kind of as the lead on the uh, long legs case, and she is having various flashbacks. She has this really the, almost like a psychic uh, ability she has like she can she kind of gets these hunches and like she'll know where someone is or a suspect is and she'll see things before they happen so she's got this weird psychic thing going on and she has a very stoic personality so you can't really get a read on her but she kind of feels like she has a little bit of that going on with the long legs investigation and so I was able to follow it and I was able to follow there's time jumps in it that happened as well which is part of what I missed probably when I was sleeping but between the time jumps and then her psychic things like the dream states that were going on I was totally lost but this time I followed it from beginning to end and wow what an amazing amazing movie this is one of my I know it's going to be one of my favorites of the year Nicolas Cage is unbelievable in this and uh i thought the performances were great the story is great i love how they tell it i love the time jumps i love this whole psychic thing and i really hope that they continue with this uh, i hope they do a part two or even a prequel would be great um i just want to know more about it i want to know more about this character and how it came to be but i just think this is really really good it's super creepy i know i'm being vague because i'm assuming that a lot of people maybe haven't seen it yet but if you liked Silence of the Lambs, you're going to love this. 
Um, Silence of the Lambs is always going to be number one for me, but this is really, really good. So if you like that kind of thing, definitely give Long Legs a chance because it is a banger. I loved it. The second time around, I loved it. Uh, you just make sure you're not, not tired when you go in because you definitely don't want to sleep through any of that. Now this one, this took a long time for me to come around with this one, and it is Natalie Portman in Black Swan. And this is one of those uh, crazy steelbooks that uh, Best Buy had out a few years ago with the uh, like Day of the Dead sugar scroll things. Um, Natalie Portman plays a ballerina in um, New York City in this very competitive uh, uh, ballet group, and they're doing um, Swan Lake as their big... Uh, end of the year production and they have the white swan and they have the black swan and there's competition and she lives with her mother who's overbearing and just on her about everything about her practicing about her weight about what she's eating and she's really mentally I would say she's kind of Natalie Portman's characters in a, like a mentally unstable state during most of the movie but what happens is it kind of takes dark turns and there's things that happen and she's not really sure if that's what is happening or is she imagining it because she's run down and she's kind of imagining things or maybe over projecting what's happening and the first time I saw it the end between all that the weirdness of the movie itself and then the ending is just super weird I mean it went to a whole new level of weird for me the first time I, I just was like I'm out I'm not doing this is ridiculous I'm out give it a few years Kelly wants to see it. I'm like, you don't want to see that movie. It's so bad. You don't want to see it. So what do I do? I get it. I sit down. I am so invested in this movie. I saw it for what it was. I was in a different mindset. I was able to follow it. I thought the plot line was great. I thought the writing was brilliant. I thought the interactions and her paranoia and her just her really weird mental state through the whole movie was so well done. It was done to perfection. It was really, really good. And it had just enough horror elements in it to keep me interested and I thought the ending was almost like chef's kiss I thought it was perfect and I don't know why I had such a weird reaction to it the first time but second time was a winner for me I thought this was brilliant I think it's a really great movie and I would watch this with anyone now I know it's not going to be for everyone because again it's one of those unconventional films it's it's kind of you have to suspend disbelief and if you can do that and just follow what they give you on the screen it's a great experience so I am now a fan of Black Swan and I think I always will be but really really good one and this is another one this one is part of the Criterion collection and I got this because it is from the same director Celine Sciamma who did Portrait of a Lady on Fire which was one of my favorite films of that that year that it came out I think it was 2019 that is a beautiful wonderful film and if you haven't seen it I highly recommend uh, recommend Portrait of a Lady on Fire and this one as well this one is called Petite Maman I believe that's how you say it that is the spelling we have to do the spine number spine number alert it is 1181 this is from 2021 it is 73 minutes and it is in French with English subtitles so I do apologize there is one foreign language film in here but if French is not your if, if French is not your primary language it is a world cinema film in French language with English subtitles basically what we have is we have a little girl and she's about eight years old I think her name is Nellie and her maternal grandmother has passed so what happens is the family picks up and they go to the her mother her father herself they go to the grandmother's house because they have to go through the grandmother's things sort through the house and decide I guess what they're going to do with everything and she goes out and she's going to play in the woods and she meets this little girl and they form this friendship and they're doing things they're running around the house and I kind of didn't understand what was going on I didn't understand what the point of her meeting this little girl was and having these weird experiences when she went back to her grandmother's house I didn't get it is basically what happened and I wasn't really sure um why certain things were happening and why it was tied into the grandmother's house and it was very bizarre to me so I talked to my friend John Planet X2 who's always the king of wisdom and he said to me he's like don't watch the special features but there's something in there that explains all that he's like but give it another chance because he gave it another chance and he saw it through totally different eyes and he said and then watch the special feature 
So I did what he said and I adore this film. What it is basically, without spoiling anything, is it is a study on grief. It, we're kind of seeing the parents and the grieving process and the family through a different lens and that's what she's kind of showing us how different things happen and how we recall different memories and how we basically process the grief, the whole grief process and the grieving process. So this is a very, very deep, deep film that I think, and I, I know I'm gonna take something different away from it every time. But um, if you're gonna watch this one, I say give it a look and then watch the special features on it where they uh, the director explains basically the the core of what this movie is is bringing to you. but. Petite Maman is now one of my favorite films uh, of, uh, I would say, 2021. Really, really good. So solid film, and it's solid film about uh, grief is the long and short of it. Now this next one, I I hated on this film for so long, and now I just, ooh, I feel so bad for every bad thing I said about this because I really did enjoy it this time. Uh, this is from 2003. It is a, the remake of Friday the 13th. Now, this is set, I, I believe this is supposed to be uh, kind of set in the time zone of the second Friday the 13th because uh, we do have the, the Jason character in it. So um, basically what we have is this group of friends and they're going out to, uh, it's a cabin, but it's not, it's not like a rundown cabin. It's a really nice house. Uh, they're going out to party and hang out and, and do their thing and it's by uh, Camp Crystal Lake and so you know of course certain things are going to happen and we have a fellow who shows up and he's looking for his missing sister and the sister has been missing for some time. She had last been seen around the Crystal Lake area so things have happened but he's looking for his sister and he meets up with these um, the these group of uh, kids young people young adults that are staying in this cabin and i just thought the whole thing was dopey and corny and it didn't need to be made and i had such a me and my attitude who am i i said this didn't need to be made it was a waste it was dumb it was uh, pointless there's no reason for it walked away then it's uh introduced on 4k what do i do i get a copy and I watched The Killer Cut, which is a little bit longer. I don't know how much different, I can't remember how much different it is in the theatrical, but all I know is I loved it. I watched it last week, I loved it. The 4K is stunning. The kills are great. The kills in the beginning, when um, the group of uh, people are first at Crystal Lake before the, the uh, cabin people come. Amazing, so good. Jason is brutal, it's scary, it's creepy. It has everything in it. And then even when the people come and they're staying in the cabin, like the whole relationship, like you have the whole, like the partying and the cheating boyfriend and like all the things that you would expect from one of these uh, Friday the 13th films. And it just followed the playbook so well, but in a more modern stylized version. And it was so, so good. And I thought the uh, relationships between the characters were very believable. Jason was menacing. They threw in some things from the, you know, from the original, I guess, Friday the 13th part two. They threw in some things from there that made it feel authentic. And I think that they stayed true to the franchise, the Jason character, the storyline. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I think this is really, really good. It totally changed my mind on this film. And uh, the 4K looks fantastic. And this is still available. It's a newer release, like within the last few weeks. If you can pick it up, pick it up because it is well worth it and uh, definitely watch the killer cut because it is really really good and that's all I'm gonna say about it it's very good okay so this next one is also a foreign language film I apologize but it's horror all you have to do is really watch it don't worry about it it's in Spanish with English subtitles um, and it is when evil lurks now if you've been around the channel you already know I love this movie I, I think it's fantastic but I have to say the first time I watched it I had a really, really hard time with the gore and just the whole vibe of the movie. It was very unsettling. It was very over the top with the gore. I couldn't handle it. I, I, I was looking away. I couldn't, I couldn't even finish it actually because it was just too much for me. I don't know what happened, but I didn't really connect with it. So I turned it off, but I kept it hanging around. I kept reading reviews. I kept talking to people and I'm like, you know what? I'm not losing my horror card. So I put it back in. I had a different mindset. I knew what I was in for. And I loved it. And I love it to this day. But basically what we have is we have a village. It's a small village. Just a brief synopsis. 
uh, it's a small village and they believe someone in the village has become, I would say, possessed with something that they call the evil. And they need for the evil to be out of the village so the villagers and their animals and everything can be safe. But there's a right way and a wrong way to get rid of the evil. And if they do it the wrong way, which of course you know they're going to do, it's just going to wreak havoc on everyone. But this is such a great film. It is so unsettling. It is so gory. But they also tell a great story. And the great story is what hooked me in the second time because they really do take you through the entirety of the origins of the evil and where it came from and how to deal with it. And it is just done so well. Right to the last frame, I was hooked in. And I think this is just such a great movie and such a different take for the horror genre. I thought it was just something totally different and it just sucked me in and I can watch this over and over and over again. I would like to tell you that the gore lets up or you get used to it, but it really doesn't. It, it kind of hangs with you through the whole movie, but the story is just so good that it's worth it. Just look away every once in a while, but it, it's a fantastic story and uh, I think it's really well done and it's a very different kind of a horror story and um, not your typical like possession thing. It's really, really cool. So When Evil Lurks would be my next one that was a first time fail and is now at the top of my horror list. And this last one, I think a lot of people will agree. A lot of people, this really didn't get the best reviews when it came out. And I think a lot of people still really don't connect with it, but uh, listen to the cast. It stars Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, uh, Mindy Kaling, Sarah Paulson, Aquafina, Rihanna, and Helena Bonham Carter and it is Oceans 8 and this is part of the Oceans trilogy but it's the uh the gals and I have to say when I the first time I saw this I didn't uh use subtitles I think I probably maybe I just maybe the first time I saw it was when it came out on 4k I don't think I saw it in theaters but I didn't put the subtitles on and the the dialogue is very very fast and you have a lot of people talking at one time they're planning this um, heist as they do in all the Oceans uh, movies, but they're planning this heist and they're going round and round and back and forth and from frame to frame and so many people and there's so many moving parts in this movie. It's really, really easy to get lost and feel like what just happened because it all happens in the blink of an eye. And that is kind of the style of the Oceans movies, but this one was just, it felt like it was it had more plot holes or more questions. It left me with more questions than answers when all was said and done. But I did like the cast. I do like the cast. And I was willing to give it another try. So when the Oceans trilogy came out on 4K this year, I then wanted to watch Oceans 8 again and see if I felt differently about it. And Sandra Bullock plays Danny Oceans, uh, George Clooney's sister. He supposedly passed and she takes over and she is also a criminal. She gets out of jail. She gets her girls together and they want to pull off a heist. And what I did, of course, now I watch everything with the subtitles. So I was able to follow the story and there really aren't the plot holes that you would think. It's really a complete story and a complete picture from beginning to end. You know everything if you can follow who's talking, what they're saying and what they're referring to. And I find the subtitles are the easiest way to do it with a film that has this many moving parts. I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was so good that I was kind of hoping that they would make a second one. And that is not the feeling I had the first time. The first time I was like, that was a total fail. It was a total waste of time. And the second time I really, really liked this. This is probably one of my, I would say maybe my second favorite Oceans film. I think this is really good. I know not everyone's gonna agree with that. There's gonna be a lot of people who still don't care for this. I don't know if it's the all-female cast or if maybe there are some missing pieces, but I just feel like I'm more connected to it now because with being able to see the dialogue and see the planning instead of just trying to figure out what everybody's saying when they're all talking at the same time, I was able to sort things out and follow the plot of, and the story arc and the character arcs better. So I had more clarity on what they were doing and what they were saying. So that was my experience with the second time with the film the second time and I really walked away with a, just a totally different perspective on it and I really really do like this one and if Sandra Bullock does return to acting I'd love to see them do another Oceans with the ladies because it's a heck of a lineup and they did a fantastic job. So 
that's my last film in my, uh, you know, my first time fails. And these were movies that I just didn't connect with as will happen with all of us. You know, there are just those movies that you just don't connect with even if people say that they're great. So I always suggest giving them a second try because you just might end up with a new favorite. So if you guys like this, I will keep it as an ongoing series because believe me, I have tons of films that I've had these similar experiences with. And of course, like I said, let me know down in the comments, what films did you not connect with the first time that now are favorites or at least you like them. So that's it for today. I want to thank you for watching. As always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you who take time to watch these videos. And I hope you like things like this, like new segments, collection updates, hauls, movie reviews, everything that has to do with physical media. If you like content like that, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload again. It's not going to be as long, I promise. I am getting ready for uh, October is going to be huge. You know, there's going to be a ton of horror content. It's my favorite month of the year. I can't wait. But I have some things to do between uh, now and then to uh, get get caught up with everything. And um, I have a bunch of different things coming for you. But I will have some things up this week, maybe a haul and some other things that I want to do. And um, I will see you during the week. So that's going to do it for me today. Again, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. And that's a wrap.